Thank you for being here. We are going to talk today about uh, technical analysis and actually practical technical analysis. Uh, so let's just start with our presentation right now. Here we go. So we are actually at lesson five, which is day three, and we are going to discuss practical technical analysis, as I mentioned. And just uh, let's review what we're going to talk today about. We will cover today reversal patterns. We'll talk about uh, trading ideas with reversal patterns and then, of course, technical patterns. Now, the difference between reversal patterns and technical patterns is actually where you would like to anticipate a price change change direction that would be reversal patterns and technical patterns would be more like continuation continuation patterns so we're going to talk about that and how exactly do we use them in order to anticipate the next move what do we think is going to happen during our trading session when we watch at the stock uh, live or when we actually watch the daily chart of a stock if we swing trade the stock so all of this is important and of course just is used in order to give us some kind of edge we're going to start with the reversal pattern and I would like that to be not very technical really it is technical analysis but I would like it to be a little bit more practical okay so let's try and see what uh, we can do or how we can use uh, reversal patterns and then go live and see if we can anticipate something that is maybe about to happen in the market in stock or whatever so if you by the way have um, a trading platform open so just take a look try and find something that uh, you think you want us to take a look at together and we will try and figure out together uh, based on the materials that we're going to to discuss now okay then uh, so the basic reversal patterns are actually quite simple uh, some of you those who already traded and know about um, Japanese candlesticks these are quite simple really but whatever we're watching right now you always need to remember that once we talk about reversal or breakdown breakout patterns which we will talk later you always have to take that into you always have to take into consideration the trend meaning for example if I'm watching a morning doji star which is a rev an upside reversal as you can see the price is moving lower then stops right around here and moving higher so we're seeing here a reversal but it's a reversal within a downtrend that's why you see the two um, so-called candles that you see here which are not really candles it just shows you that the price is really descending so we're looking at the price that is moving lower 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 and then at that point there's a red candle what we called a doji star and the reversal there comes the green candle so we're watching at that and we are anticipating based on this formation that the price would move higher now does that mean we're going to go long here if the trend is down well absolutely not we will anticipate a reversal in that case maybe in order to well take profits let's say we short a stock and we're looking at this down trending stock and at that point based on what we see here because we may see a doji star over there then we may consider taking a profit question is okay so that that looks like a very valid reversal but the main question is where do we actually move in where do we take an action where do we click the button where do we uh, push the button in order to let's say take a profit uh, closer short in a trade or maybe just not get into a short whatever we're going to decide to do now that's that's a practical part that's what important for me to go through with you and not really the technical part okay so that's a dodgy dodgies are for reversals and that's fine okay uh, on the second candle on the tall green okay uh, good question so you're saying uh, 
Maria that maybe I should just when it starts being green over here I should move out well um, let's let's actually take a look at some at some examples let's first take a look at uh, evening doji star and well we'll go through them all really and, and and then we'll go to the charts and start and start uh, thinking about what to, how 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 we should uh, react to that so again in this case evening doji, doji star we're seeing that we are in fact in the uptrend. This is why you see the two so-called candles here, not really, but it shows you that the price is coming from the bottom higher. And then at the top, we're seeing the doji star, which means we are anticipating something. And then comes the red candle, which in fact shows us that we do have a reversal. So having a doji at uh, the end of the line either while we are trending higher or while we're trending lower is always very important and the meaning of a doji really uh, is 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 just it, it's quite simple really because when you take a look for example when when we're looking at the descending price when we take a look at this red candle over here so you could see that very clearly the sellers were in the driver's seats the sellers were selling they 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 were in control uh, they took over and all of a sudden you get a doji meaning doji means in fact that the seller's power is equal as now the buyer's power therefore uh, during this candle and by the way it doesn't matter how long is the candle meaning I don't care if these are one minute candles uh, two minute candles five minute candles 30 minute candles or a day candle or a week candle if we're taking a look at uh, this candle it doesn't really matter what time frame we're using so if we're trading intraday th this would probably be I don't know one maybe five minute candle most likely five because most technical analysis really is based on five minute candles and it is based on five minute candles because most of the people are watching five minute candles now you do know that I'm looking for some technical patterns using one minute candle at the beginning of the trading day which is fine that's what I do and my system supports that which is okay that's the way I trade and some systems do not support five minute candles or maybe it's going to be a little bit harder for you to trade with five minute candles using my system however most systems I would say 95% of the systems go with five minute candles and the reason they do that is quite simple most people are watching five minute candles five minute candles are being watched by institutional traders and putting everything together means just one very clear thing intraday is anticipated mostly and I say mostly by five minute candles because most people watch them because most people watch them and some people would take a look and see for example a reversal pattern they would come to the point where they say okay at five minute candles there's a reversal pattern maybe I should exit a short here maybe I should go long whatever they are basing their decision on five minute candles if you try to base your decision on two minute candles because you think two minute candles work better for you well they may do in certain systems but if you try to base your decision on two minute candles forget about it because you are not watching the same time frame as most of the people do so if you try to base your decision to move in uh, on the daily chart you should be watching one day candles or maybe weekly candles because if you're a call trader investing for the long run weekly candles make sense if you are a swing trader or just an investor uh, then you should be watching daily candles and when you have some kind of a pattern then that means a lot of people are watching it now why is it important that a lot of people are watching the same kind of pattern all the time well the, the answer of course is that technical analysis is very much a tool that is being used by so many people at the right time so in fact it's a self-fulfilling prophecy now it's 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 not that you know we're trying to uh, invent something that uh, wasn't invented uh, um, I mean thousands of years ago, years ago. It's, it, it just reflects 
the way that people believe, it reflects the psychology of people, technical analysis, but the most important part is that a lot of people are thinking the same thing because they read the same books, they go to the same schools, or not the same schools, but they go to the same kind of lessons, like you guys are doing right now this lesson with me, you know what to, to anticipate, and that makes you a part of a big crowd of people who are in fact doing the same thing. So really it is a self-fulfilling prophecy. If a lot of people are watching the same pattern, then they will probably act accordingly. Now, does that work better with a stock that volume is uh, low, or does that work better with a stock that its volume is high? Well, of course, the answer is quite simple. The more people are watching uh, the, the te these technical patterns, the more will do, will come to the same conclusion and do the same thing. So if they're going to see a doji here, it's very likely that the next candle is going to be green. Therefore, again, it is a prophecy, it is something that a lot of people will be doing according to what they learn, to what they believe in, and so it all comes in together the same way. People are watching the same patterns, are doing the same thing, and we are watching the same five-minute candles, just like everybody else, let's say we're talking intraday, in order to come to the same conclusion. Now, let's go for the morning dodge star to the morning star, which is a little bit different, because as you can see here, uh, here's a, there's a dodge really, so that means that uh, buyer seller was exactly like, uh, uh, the, the buyer's power was exactly like the, the seller's power, but over here, as you can see, uh, that is in fact a green candle here at the bottom, which shows us that the buyers are in fact a little bit stronger than the sellers. Which one would you say is a stronger pattern? Uh, this doji reversal or this what we call morning star reversal? Which one would you would you like but better actually? Anything? Any any idea? Morning star, doji star, doji morning, morning doji. <laughs> you say the morning. You like the doji? Okay. Morning it looks like uh, <laughs> like 50%. You guys think uh, okay? Well, it, it all comes to it all comes to what most people think, and in fact, most people would believe that uh, morning stars are stronger reversal because it's already green because you see. Uh, the beginning of uh, control of uh, taking over of the buyers. Here you don't yet see that in this candle. So most people will think that Morningstar is, is stronger than uh, Doji Star. Therefore, it's probably a stronger pattern. It's probably going to work better. It's the same thing as you watch, for example, a stock that is moving higher. That's the trend right here. And of course, again, I would like to remind that once more always always consider the trend so if i'm if i'm watching here a reversal and this is a reversal of prices moving up and then reversing to the downside it is in the context of a trend first the trend is higher that's what i'm trying to explain here by these two lines that we're seeing here so we're, we're looking at an, at an uptrend and when you look at an uptrend and you get a reversal, you're not supposed to be taking a trade counter the trend. You're not supposed to. You are supposed to take a trade within the trend. The trend is your friend. It is always important. Now, do some traders take trades which are counter trend? Absolutely they do. Is that something you should do as a beginner? Absolutely not. But it is something that some people do, but most likely you're not supposed to be going against a trend. Okay, just don't do that. And again, even if you think something looks like uh, every day, by the way, if you're with me in the trading room, you would see me react to that every day. Somebody would say, I would like to short something that looks like amazingly strong, in my opinion. And then, well, it does look like a great breakdown pattern, but it's up 5%. And I don't even care if it's trending low, it's up 5%, or it's trending higher, why would you like to short it? Something like that. Well, if you'll take, um, if you'll take 100 trades and 
take them against the trend, you are very, very likely to lose in 60. Then, right, you do remember sometimes the 40 that were great. Still, you are more likely to lose money. And that's probably not a good idea. So again, we have the morning star, and of course the reverse side when you're going up, and then you have this small uh, candle right here at the top, um, and then of course followed by a red candle. Now, it the the technical formation really is only completed is only completed when you see, for example, a green candle after this morning star or a green candle after this doji star. That's when really the technical formation is completed. So if you go by the technical books, let's call it this way, that's the place where you should go long. If you go by what I believe, you are absolutely not in the place where you should go long. So uh, one of the things that you need to know about successful trading is the fact that you need to anticipate to anticipate the anticipation of others and that is something that is something that John Maynard Keynes said that many years ago but this is something I strong, strongly believe in I don't wait for the technical formation to to be completed I can't wait in that point where when I'm taking a look at the technical formation, I need to anticipate the anticipation of others. And that means that I'm taking a look at this green candle over here. And maybe during this candle, I will decide that I need to go, or maybe, excuse me, not need to go long, because of course the trend is, <laughs> the trend is coming down. This is downtrending. But maybe I need to close my shot, okay? Take, take, take profits at that point. When should I take the profits? Should I take the profits when this green candle is completed over here? Absolutely not. I need to anticipate this green candle, whether it's going to be in this candle over here or in that candle, it's probably going to be in the beginning of this green, green candle over here. Now, this is a little bit more tricky, the morning doji star, because it is a bit hard to anticipate a reversal here unless you already start seeing some green lights from here. Now, is it possible that sometime, what do you think? Is it possible that sometime I will anticipate uh, the reversal here right after this green candle started, but I can still see some green and at some other time I will anticipate the reversal, let's say, at the at half of the green candle, or maybe a little bit higher than that even. What do you think? I mean, is that possible? Or do I have to need to, or do I need very clear rules about that? So should I have a very clear, clear rule that says, okay, when I just start seeing something green, I'm, let's say, covering my short. Or when I'm seeing a little bit more, or much more, or wait until the end. What do you think? What, what? Should I have clear rules? Yes or no? What's your opinion? Very clear cut rules to know exactly where I'm moving out. Okay. Now, interesting. Um, it, it's, it's a good thing that you're thinking about it. I mean, I, I want you to think. It doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. I want you to think because once I ask you a question like that, uh, that makes you think what is really the, the, the right answer. If I just talk about it, then, you know, y y you won't remember it as good as if you were thinking about the answer. Let me tell you that uh, very clearly. Uh, you In trading, you can't ever have a rule. You can't ever have a rule. It is impossible to have a rule. Well, you, you have a basic rule. You take a look at the, at, at the pattern and you say, okay, I, I kind of know what's about to happen. I need to consider my exit point. Let's say again, I'm, I'm short. But the rule is based on so many different variations. So many. Like, for example, Okay, I see a doji, I see a reversal, I think maybe I should move out. It's already a little bit green, okay? 
But then I take a look at the market. You remember the first lesson we talked about the S&P 500, and then the S&P 500 crashes right at that point. So should I have a clear cut rule? Say, okay, I move out. Absolutely not. I'm watching the S&P. The S&P is moving down. Maybe I should go through this reversal. Told you about reversals. I hate reversals. One day I'm going to catch the guys that is in, in charge of reversal is going to have a hard time with me. But seriously, if I'm seeing a reversal here and the market crashes down, then I shouldn't have a clear cut all. Now, maybe I can see, now let's talk about a stock that is moving higher like that, okay, and I get to see a reversal over here and then it comes down a little bit. Now I'm looking at that and I'm asking myself, well, should I move out of a long? Okay, I'm long a stock. I'm thinking about maybe taking a partial here and then I see this reversal and then it starts coming down and then I'm, well, I'm looking at it and then I'm saying to myself, maybe I should close my long just when I see the beginning of a red candle or whatever or a little bit more than that or whatever. Well, does it also have to do with the volume? Let's say I had a very nice upside volume here and then the reversal is with very small volume. Let's even consider that uh, the market's not doing much right now, but I can see that it's moving down, but the volume is very, very low, whatever, or maybe the market's doing this, or maybe the market is doing that, and then I am looking at the volume. Now, maybe I should also be looking at uh, moving averages. Maybe I should be looking at the view up. Maybe I should be looking at the sector of the stock that I'm trading. If you get my meaning, there are no clear-cut rules ever. So if there were clear-cut tools, then every software could do that better than we. So you don't need to go through a trading session with me. You don't need to learn trading. You just need to know how to program software that whenever it sees a dodgy and the slightest part of red or whatever afterwards, it will just take a profit. Does that uh, will make you rich? Well, I, if, if, you, if you understand what I'm saying, there are some people who are very capable at writing software and surely more than I do, which by the way I don't, but these people who maybe some of them went through any education, trading education, try doing that. I mean, I've seen so many people trying to write a software, okay, I see Doji, I'll move out, I'll move in, I go short, I go long because I see a morning star, because I see doji. If you would take a technical analysis book and try to put it all in a software that does exactly like the technical analysis book, I'm going to, I'm promising you, you're going to lose money. I'm promising you because I've seen quite, quite a lot of, uh, quite a lot of tests. I've seen quite a lot of people who are trying to do that. Seriously, guys, it's impossible possible. It is impossible. You can't put what we're learning today into a software and trust it to make money. It is just impossible because the rules are so different based on situations, based on volume, based on a lot of things. Then maybe you could say, okay, if you put everything together, the volume and this and that. No, it's not really like that. It's, it, it is a combination of everything. It is a combination of, of the chart, the pattern, the, 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 what you think, what is the artistic feeling that you have about what's going to come next, about what happened in the last hour. Like you only see, for example, here, um, when it trends up, you only see two candles before. So, okay, so it turned up. But where did it really come from? Like what happened yesterday, for example? Did uh, yesterday the stock uh, move up 5% and now it's moving another 2%? Then maybe I would refer to this reversal here a little bit different than if it uh, started by moving up half percent today and that's it and did nothing yesterday. So there's a lot of things that you need to see. There's a lot of things that you need to consider. There's a lot of things that... Uh, once you see a reversal, you need to know what to do. Okay, let's go to the piercing line. And again, we're talking about reversal pattern. Just to make sure you understand, this, these things were, were watched hundreds of years ago when technical analysis was, was invented. Actually, not, uh, 
not in the Western world, but uh, in, 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 in Japan. So this, these things were watched a long time ago, uh, came into some kind of technical analysis, started in the 1900s. I think the first book was written, if I'm not mistaken, uh, by a guy named Cohen, something 1932, 1936, something like that. Can't remember exactly, if I'm not mistaken, about the date too. So, technical analysis is 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 not uh, has not been f with us for long, but the human behavior, which is based on, has been with us for long. So even though people were not watching, um, were not watching. Japanese candlesticks, well, some people in Japan may have done that a long time ago, but let's say in the New York Stock Exchange or whatever, were not watching uh, Japanese candlestick, they were still referring to the same thing. So a stock is going down, 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 big red candle, there comes what we call a piercing line, meaning a green candle that moves in uh, at least half, that's what piercing line is about, uh, at least half of the previous red candle. That means probably a reversal. So they were not really watching. They were not really watching Japanese candlesticks. But it is quite easy to understand that okay, the price went down that much. Now it continues, and now it's coming up, and it's moving here and there. Some of them were painting themselves. By the way, you should read the books. Yeah, there's several books that have been written about trading in the 1800s, late 1800s, um, and, and and there was amazing books. I mean, if you if you read about them, you will you will understand that uh, things weren't different back then. They absolutely weren't different back then. Same thing, but less people were doing the same thing. But again, it's all based on human behavior. It's all based on on psychology. Some people ask me what is the most important ingredient for a trader to be. I mean, most people would think that uh, you need to be good math in mathematics or understand about uh, f finance or something like that. Wrong, 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 absolutely wrong. You need to understand behavior. You need to understand people. If you understand behavior, you understand people, you can trade. You can trade. But then, of course, you need to add everything together. Okay, so uh, next one would be a bullish engulfing pattern, like, of course, price goes down, 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 down. Not a big war here, it's not a big candle, it's uh, just a regular red candle, and then you can see that there's a huge green candle, which, in fact, puts in the shadow, as we call it, the previous candle. So, as long as this candle is, and again, I'm, I'm getting very technical here, but that's the definition. As long as this candle covers altogether the previous candle, including the topping tail and the bottoming tail, uh, then that would be considered as an engulfing candle, and engulfing candles are one of the strongest reversal patterns. Now, this is a bit tricky because engulfing can only be spotted when really the green candle just overtakes the red one, meaning at that point. So, that, that again, very technically, that would be the point where you should press the button. Now, one more thing about when to press the button is, okay, as I mentioned earlier, you need to anticipate the anticipation of others. What does that mean, really? And to anticipate the anticipation of others means that if... Well, firstly, you need to be very... Uh, you need to know the rules and, and you need to have quite a lot of experience. The more experience you have, the more you can anticipate the anticipation of other. So, if a person just uh, read a book about technical analysis, then it's very easy to anticipate him. If a person um, is very experienced, then it's very hard to anticipate him. But the fact is, most people are novice traders or investors, therefore you can't, you can quite easily anticipate what they're doing. Of course, we never have 100%. It's a very hard occupation. I don't want to, to sound like it's something easy. But the fact is, anticipation is easy. Being right, if you get to 65 or 70%, that is great. Okay, so here we've seen downtrending stock and then a reversal. Here we're seeing uptrending stock and then a reversal. And that is called a bearish engulfing. Hammer. 
we're moving down, 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 down. Here's a trend, and now at one point, this whole candle, as you can see from the bottoming tail, was red. Now, again, if you see a bottoming tail, that means that at some time, this green now candle is or was red. Therefore, as at, at some time, it was a very red candle, by the way, because you can see that there's a very long bottoming tail here. So it was very clear that sometime throughout this candle, I guess it doesn't matter if it's a five minute candle or one day candle, the sellers were in control. The sellers were very much in control and then the buyers moved in and the buyers took control and it finished up instead of greenish green. And again, that's one of the strongest reversal patterns because you can see that the sellers were in control and you can see that the buyers took over so therefore you have a very good chance of uh, changing uh, a change of direction and again big question is when do you click the button we'll take a look at it soon okay uh, same applies here as you can see that price is moving up a topping tail in this case but again it doesn't really matter if the candle is going to be red or the candle as you can see here is green so even if it's left uh, red here for example it doesn't much matter what is met what does matter is the fact that there's a long bottoming tail and again here you don't really care about the color of this candle you care mostly about the fact that you can see a topping tail here and a reversal right over there so that would be called a shooting star for obvious reasons as you can see that is called a hammer okay does it look like a hammer well, maybe, <laughs> whatever. So anyway, uh, these are the reversal patterns. And if we want to take a look at them while we're watching a chart, you can see that uh, the same patterns are noticed everywhere. And we'll go live in a few seconds and try and watch that and maybe anticipate the next move somewhere. So if you take a look at this chart over here, it's some special points not always you can see some reversals like for example here a long bottoming tail or here a long topping tail which means that there's a good chance that the price would move down now I can't I can't really tell you about the trend but uh, again the trend is always important because for example if uh, it's an uptrending stock as you can see here there's a new high low higher high and then a higher low, somewhat higher low, then you anticipate a continuation. But again, right over here, you can see an engulfing candle. Okay. And engulfing is one of the strongest reversals, as I mentioned earlier. And it is during an uptrend. Therefore, you anticipate it to move higher. And right over here, you see a sort of a morning star. And then still, the stock is uptrending. Even though it did not reach a new high, right over here you can see there's some kind of resistance, you can definitely see that the stock is uptrending, therefore the only direction you should be caring about is maybe going long while you're seeing a reversal like that. And again, it doesn't matter if it's a daily candle, as it is right now by on this chart, or if it's a 5-minute candle, it's the same thing. But what else do you see here that um, help you think that you want to go long once you take a look at this chart what 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 i mean I'm, I'm talking mainly about this point over here why would i like to go long here and we'll go through this later you know cup and handle stuff like that we'll talk about it but before we go we, we talk about it what makes me think i really want to go long at this point over here what makes you feel that way higher highs i don't actually see higher highs you see, this is high, this high is almost similar, this one is again almost similar, can't really call them higher highs. You see resistance, right, so it's a very clear resistance, you want to go over the highs, assuming that uh, there are sellers at the resistance point and then there's a good chance that it's going to be broken. By the way, would you buy before it's broken anticipating it's gonna come up what do you think 
breaking resistance volume. You see volume, you see consolidation, you see three attempts to pass the resistance, that is correct, minimum risk entry after breaking resistance. Now you wouldn't try and buy before the resistance totally support what you're saying here. Never ever buy before you can see that the resistance is broken. Maybe if you're trading live and you can see that in your eyes live that uh, let's say it's a whole number or something and you can see that the number of sellers is is, 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 is dropping down and you're just about to go long because anyway it's going to come over whatever whole, whole number or something like that. Fine, do that live when you see that. But uh, resistance are there because people are selling there. And the, the, there is a very good possibility that this stock would come down and never ever come back again. Never ever come back again. So again, when a stock comes to the point of resistance, you don't want to anticipate it, okay? You want to see it over the resistance and then you want to buy. So again, also anticipation is not clear cut rules. Uh, well, okay, so we're seeing three attempts, as you mentioned, to break over the highs. Actually, if you take a look at these attempts over here, it's plenty of attempts to break over the highs, and it fails. What I also see here is, yes, the volume, of course, also important, because as you can see, uh, as the stock moving higher, let's say here or over here, the volume is growing. As it moves slower, the volume is kind of moving along, which is not really correct over here. And as it hits uh, the resistance point over here, the volume is very low. Okay, quite low. And it only grows when you see the breakout, which is something that is very, very good. Okay, what I also see is higher lows. Higher lows are very important. Thank you, Anna. Higher lows are very important. Higher lows means that the buyers are getting more and more aggressive. So they let it move down here, fine. Now they're letting it move a little bit higher. Not really noticeable here, but very noticeable here. So as you can see, buyers are getting more and more aggressive. They are in fact buying at higher prices now. They are buying at higher prices. And again here, they don't let it move much down. They are buying at higher prices. Let's quickly move to the market. By the way, I hate what I'm going to show you. I hate what I'm going to show you here. Let's take a look at the daily of the S&P 500. Okay, so that's the daily of the S&P 500. Now, as you can see what happened recently in the last few days, um, this pullback that we're seeing here, okay, which I really, really hope is going to take us lower. So far, I'm wrong. Uh, initially, it took us lower. As you can see, it took us all the way down here. But that was the day when we gapped down and then closed the gap. That was yesterday. Closed the gap, which I didn't really think it's going to happen. But it did. We closed the gap. So what you're seeing here is buyers are getting more and more aggressive. Because any pullback right now in the market is, as I'm learning, by the way, to see, as I'm learning to see, is being taken care of by people who would like to buy at lower prices uh, than the highs, meaning they, they, they are making use of any pullback in order to to buy more. They are. So if you, if whatever we're going to see, whatever we're seeing right now is just excuses to go long whenever the voice, the voice, the, sorry, the price comes down. So I was surprised to see that yesterday and that really kind of changed what uh, I thought about should happen uh, in fact this week. I don't know, maybe I'm not wrong yet. Maybe I'm going to see the market moving down the next few days. But right now I'm having second thoughts about what I'm what I'm seeing right here. So again, I'm seeing the buyers getting more and more aggressive as, as the market just pulls back slightly and then buyers are coming in. So is it possible that the market actually is going to come over the highs? Yesterday I thought no. Today, well, <laughs> I may be wrong. So again, buyers are getting more and more aggressive. You need to see that uh, and you need to think about that. And especially when you see this consolidation area over here. Let me ask you one more thing. Now, as, 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 as you notice, I'm not, I don't like only to talk about technical patterns. I would really, really like to discuss with you guys uh, the meaning of things. So 
the practical par part of, of the technical patterns, we are watching this consolidation over here, as you can see. And I would like to ask you a question. Um, okay, here we go. What do you think is better before the consolidation, before the breakout, at the consolidation area, right here? Do you think, by the way, we're seeing here, in this case, low volume, but what would I prefer? High volume before the breakout or low volume before the breakout? What do you think is better? What do you think is better? Okay, so it consolidates here for several days. By the way, same thing apply for 5-minute candles. Please understand that. Same thing apply intraday, 5-minute candles, if you're seeing something like that. Sometimes it comes with low volume, sometimes, sometimes it comes with high volume. And please try and figure out, think about it. What would be better, high volume or low volume? So, looks like most of you think that high volume is better. We are at 58% better high volume, 41% think it's better to have low volume. Um, the answer is definitely low volume. You want to see low volume, you don't want to see high volume. And let's um, let's try and figure out why. Okay. The thing is, you don't want to see the stock changing hands too much. And when you have high volume, that means a lot of new players are coming into. If you have lower volume, that means stock does not change hand, hands that much. You don't want to see new players. You don't want to see new players. Uh, it's like, uh, you know, when you live in a neighborhood and there's a lot of, uh, and there's a lot of new people coming to the neighborhood, is that good or bad? Well, if you're used to your old, good old neighborhood and uh, to the quiet life that you had and uh, neighborhood changes, maybe a lot of immigrants coming. Well, I, I actually said something wrong. Um, maybe I shouldn't say that. Uh, maybe a lot of young people are coming into it. Is it good or bad? Well, if you're middle-aged and a lot of young people are coming, maybe it's fun, maybe it's noisy. Uh, maybe if you have immigrants coming in, then everything changes because the business changes, uh, life changes, uh, uh, it's not going to stay the same, it's going to be maybe louder, maybe quieter, maybe this, maybe that. Is it good? Most of the time people who are living in the same neighborhood for a long, long time don't really like that because the neighborhood is changing. Some of them are just moving away and then more people are moving in and then the neighborhood changes. So that m most of the old hands, as we call them in the stock uh, world, um, are, are changing. That means a lot of new hands are coming in and that is not good for a breakout. And the reason it is not good for a breakout is because when you have new hands coming in, these people who are buying at this point, where again, when a lot of stocks are changing hands, these people who are buying at this point are scared hands. These are scared people because any move to the upside that fails, they will quickly sell. You want to see old hands. You want to see people who actually bought it months ago, weeks ago, years ago, or again, when we're taking a look at intraday charts, two hours ago that already made the nice profit. Most of them bought it in this area over here. The average would be somewhere around here. So all of them or most of them had made a nice profit. You want to see them trusting the stocks. You don't want to see them selling. A lot of volume here, high volume here means a lot of people are coming in, but a lot of good old hands, strong hands are moving out. And when strong hands are moving out, uh, weekends are coming in, every small failure 
in the price. Let's say over here, the pullback is relatively moderate. But what would happen if you have a lot of new hands coming here? Any pullback like that could take the price down over here. And maybe it's going to come up, maybe it's not going to come up. But the thing is, you want to see low volume at this consolidation area. Any questions about that? It's very important. Next time when you take a look at consolidation area, try and look for lower volume, not high. High volume, that makes it dangerous. You want to be really on your edge. Like if you take a trade like that, and you see that uh, it's moving higher, and again, imagine this is five minute candle, and when you see something like that, just be real quick when you take a partial because you want to be the, among the first to take a partial. You want to be among the first at using the, the breakout in order to, to make a profit. You do not want, you do not want new hands coming into the game. Okay, so again, I'm watching this, and as you can see, I'm combining everything together. I'm combining the trend, I'm watching the reversal patterns, a dodgy heel, a bottoming tail heel, a dodgy over there. Does this, for example, topping tail matters? Yes, it does matter, but it does not make you short, okay, because again, you are in an uptrend, so you're looking, in fact, more for upside reversal patterns like we're seeing here, and then, of course, come the breakout. And then, of course, if you go along, then you can identify more changes of direction here, reversals, and so on, as we learned uh, with the reversal patterns. If you have any questions, ask them. I'm going through to the next slide. Okay, so... Now we're seeing a stock that is trending lower, and as you can see, we are concentrating on the points where we think that it's going to continue coming down, like, for example, over here and over here. Now, does it really, does it really matter? Um, what did I really want to ask here? Okay, um, is, is it always that we'll see reversal patterns, like maybe here, not really? Uh, in other places, maybe we do, maybe we don't. In many times, we just don't, okay? In many times, we just don't. We don't see any clear reversal pattern. Does that ma d d does Do we always have to see reversal pattern? The answer is no. We don't always have to see reversal pattern. The thing is, once we see reversal pattern, we should refer to that. So even though we do not always see reversal patterns, we still look for them because if we are going to see them, then we can do something about it. If we don't see a reversal pattern, maybe we just don't take the trade, we don't come to a decision, but reversal patterns are there. However, not all of the time, which is very important to understand. Sometimes they help us, sometimes they don't. After what time of the day do you switch from one minute to five minute candles? Diego, I do that usually after 30 minutes, if I remember. <laughs> I should. I should after 30 minutes. I still switch sometimes to, to, to one minute candles. I still do that every once in a while just to make sure that I'm seeing everything and also switching back to five minute candle and even to 15. But, uh, and again, it depends on my system. I have my own system that I'm using quite a lot. Therefore, I'm using one minute candles, but several systems you should be using with five minute candles throughout the first 30 minutes, which you rarely see me do. Okay, um, we can talk now about um, price patterns, but before we do that, let's uh, take a look at some charts. Is there any... Uh, no, not right. I do use them sometime, two minute candles, Diego. Yes, I do watch them. But if I do, if I watch one minute candles, I usually switch between one to five. I, I am sometimes looking at two minute candles, but rarely. Okay. So, any... Any intraday, let's let's move into intraday. Any intraday stocks you want me to take a look at? Anything you think we should be looking at or anticipating? If you like. Oh no, I did not discuss uh, about uh, Gaps, Tyler. I think Gaps is 
Um, is it tomorrow or Thursday? I think we're supposed to be learning gaps on Thursday. Okay. Taking a look at X. If we take a look at X, uh, Yum, you want Yum? Okay, whatever. What if the daily chart trend? What if the daily chart trend and the five-minute chart trend don't agree? Uh, for example, an uptrend, good point in the daily chart, but a downtrend in intraday. Well, if I'm trading intraday, the intraday counts, Bruno. However, I'm always taking a look at the daily chart. For example, I don't know if this is the case, but you know, just watch Yum over here. If you watch Yum over here, you can see the intraday pattern is uh, very nice. It shows you that um, uh, it's trending higher and you may think, okay, I would like to uh, go long somewhere here. Let's say I find a good intraday pattern to go long. That, that looked great, by the way, right over here. This one also looked very good. This one also looked very good. So I can, in fact, find three good technical patterns in Yum today. Okay, so Yum looks great, but then you need to switch to the daily too. If you switch, and while you switch to the daily, excuse me, then you may see something different. For example, before I, before I click on the daily, um, what would in fact make me say, I don't want to go long Yum, even though it looks like that. For example, if uh, Yum crashed recently, and that's just a pullback day, I would consider going long in Yum, okay? Uh, let's just take a look. Okay, that's daily. What Yum does recently, Yum is downtrending, definitely is downtrending, okay? So can Yum change direction over here? Yes, absolutely, maybe it already does. Does it look like a good long trade? Again, what we're seeing here on, on the daily chart? Uh, no, it looks terrible. It is trending lower, it recently, recently crashed, um, maybe it's going to continue higher, maybe it's going to change the trend. I don't know, but daily charts look looks terrible. Can I go long intraday based on what I see here? Yes, I can. Uh, would I give it more points because the daily looks great? Absolutely not. If I would see you going wherever, I don't know, maybe over this area over here, I would definitely give it some points for the daily. Right now, I don't. Does that mean it's not going to succeed? No, it could definitely succeed. So I may decide to go Yum because the daily chart didn't definitely say don't go long. Sometimes I'm watching different, I'm watching daily charts and I would definitely say don't go long, okay? That's not the case of Yum. Okay, that's not the case of Yum. You know what? Let's go here. Yum crashed here. That was in November. Yum crashed here. And there was a terrible day over there and the continuation. And look at the green day on which is the third day, okay? There's the third day over here. If you ask me at the beginning of this day, of course, this is a pullback day, and in fact, you moved up several percent in this day. This is a small candle over here. It means that you moved up quite a lot during this day. Of course, less than it moved down in the previous days. But st still again, you moved up. So maybe I could have looked for a reversal pattern, into the reversal pattern right over here and go long you. But if I take a look at the daily, I would definitely say, oh my God, it just crashed down. Pullback pull is not very likely. Certainly not on the third day. Sometimes it comes on the fourth or afterwards. As you can see it, here, it happens on the fifth day. But on the third day or the second day, if I would have seen you moving higher, I would definitely say, no way. I'm not going to take this trade because it just crashed down so much. I am absolutely not interested going long you. Now, 
Now, do I see that now? No, that doesn't look like something I would definitely say no, but I would hmm, kind of consider maybe I should, maybe I shouldn't. And then I go back to the interday formation. And if I see something which is perfect because it gapped up today, moved over the highs right over here, well, I would definitely say, okay, so the daily doesn't look so great, but still I would like to go long you. Uh, let's go back. Uh, let's go back to the technical pattern over here. So we are trending higher. Could we see or look for a reversal over here? What do you, What do you think? What do you think about that? Would you like to go long when you see something like that? That's That's a reversal, okay? There's a very big red candle over there. A sort of a morning star as we learned earlier and a green reversal afterwards and of course that uh, looking at it right now if you w went into this trade you if you bought if you went long into this trade in here you you could have had a great trade but what do you think would you actually go consider this as a reversal and go long yes no yes because the sellers weakened the tail, you see the tail here. That's why the good thing, it doesn't really matter if the tail, that's a good point I have to say. Uh, it doesn't really matter, and you know what's funny because we just went to through reversal pattern and we did not discuss what happens if this is a dodgy star but there's a trail before. And it's a good thing that you're putting things together because again, even if the previous candle had a tail and the candle right now has is green candle and that's a morning star and then of course, Okay, so we don't have a tail here, we have the tail there, still is fine. Absolutely right. Well, most of you seems like saying no. Um, well, I would probably say no. But I'm not sure about my answer. Has to really be, really needs to be addressed a little bit differently. Let me think again about my answer. So yesterday's close was 63.50, okay? Open was 63.97. That's 1% up, exactly 60 cents, uh, sorry, 63.50. 63.90, sorry, it's 40 cents, it's like 0.8%. So it gapped up something like 0 0.7, 0 0.8, which is quite a nice gap up, quite a nice gap up. And the stock that usually gaps up that much, uh, something's going on, something's going on. And then this, there's this bottoming tail here. That means that it moved down. Let's actually see that in one minute candles. It may be a little bit more clear for to see. Yeah. Started here. Moved down real fast. Closed the gap. Moved all the way back to the highs. Returned. Came down. Came up. That's the reversal, okay? That's the reversal. By the way, if you take a look at one minute candles, well, actually, it looks much better to go long here than in five minute candles. That's why sometimes you need to consider going long with uh, one minute candles or understanding one minute or at least s taking a look at one minute candles. So that, that's quite a valid reversal. And when you take a look at this and the first candle, of course, was red. But then when you really don't think about the first candle, you can definitely see that it's it looks like an uptrend it starts here, moves down, and then looking at one minute candles, I would definitely think uh, I, I, I may go long. I may go long. And going back to five minute candles. Oops. Okay, going back to five minute candles. We can see that, uh, again, we've seen that more clearly in one minute candles. That's why at the beginning of the trading day, I suggest you take a look at one minute candles. Again, depends on your strategy. Then we can definitely see that there is a kind of reversal that we should, we should consider to the long side. So yes, there is. And then when, once it moves over the highs and continues, then we clearly see that it's uptrending and 
as it uptrends, we can definitely look for reversals. So we're having a pullback here, uh, big red candle, sellers are aggressive, smaller candle, smaller candle, smaller candle, bottoming tails. These are reversal patterns. We don't have to learn them in order to understand that these are reversal patterns. And then we get a green candle. Big question is, of course, when should we click the button? When we're taking a look at something like that, by the way, it happened here too, but it was not as clear as here. Here we can see a formation of red candles, which is always easier to notice because if you take a look at the way the price moves up here and then you got four red candles and each and every one of them is smaller and some bottoming tails then once the green candle com comes in the green candle comes in I, I suspect that somewhere at this point right over here I would click the candle I would click I, I could definitely think about going long somewhere over this somewhere at this point and again you need to anticipate the anticipation of other and again you don't wait until this green candle is over and then go long at, this, at the next candle you need to anticipate the move right here at this candle that's and, and in the middle of this candle somewhere over there and then it continues higher and then small dodgy here but you can't really tell much because it's still really uptrending very small pullbacks very hard to anticipate. I don't think I see anything in this area over here that could help me decide to do anything. Okay, to do anything. That could be helpful and that could be helpful. That's it. Uh, sometimes you don't, you don't even see that too. So really, who knows? GALT. Let's take a look at GALT. Definitely moving lower, but the problem here, of course, is the low volume. Because when you have low volume, then, well, firstly, it's a $2 stock, then you can't really trust them because there's not a lot of institutional traders there, but the volume is too low. So we really need to take a look at something else. Uh, taking a look at R, it was definitely trending, uptrending over here. Uh, that was still considered to be an uptrend as it did move to a new high, nice morning stars over here. Um, it's not really right over here. It's not really um, engulfing candle. It's very close to engulfing candle. You could consider going long somewhere over here. Possibly think about going long over here, which didn't really work that great. Uh, over here it's a little bit risky and the reason it's a little bit risky here is because as you can see it moved under this recent low even though it's just a little it still is a bit risky but then you have this engulfing candle you could still consider going long so as you can see in many of the good entry point pot potentially good entry point not all of them are good uh, you can you can definitely see some kind of reversals and again as you can see I'm concentrating on the once it's uptrending, I'm concentrating on it as it moves higher and trying to figure out what's what really is going to happen. Uh, let's take a look at uh, Tesla. Uh, well, really nothing. Because at the beginning of the trading day, it was trending lower, then sideways, then somewhat higher. Even if I see something somewhere over here, I don't care anything. I'm not even watching this. Okay, so there's a nice reversal pattern over there. What should I do? Go short? It's at the high of the day. No. Should I go long here? No, because it's not really uptrending. Should I go long here? Yes, that is a reversal pattern, this bottoming tails. But should you go long as, is, as, as it is downtrending? No, even though it's gapping up today and looking great because it's a gap up, still you shouldn't go long. You shouldn't go long. By the way, you could go long here. You could go long here at this green candle. That would be a failing trade, but of course you don't always succeed in trading. And But if you disregard whatever happened later, because it's very hard to anticipate it, of course, once I see this green candle in a stock that is gapping up that much, and at the same time the market is trending up, I should definitely consider Tesla long over here. Okay, Apple is the last one we're going to look at. Oh my God, what happened to Apple today? Wow, unbelievable. It's up like 2.1% uh, today. Let's see the daily. Well, you see, 
that's a good example. Why? Because Apple has a very nice breakout pattern here when you watch the daily. When, up, when, when you take a look at the daily of Apple, uh, right over here, it really looks great. So very nice breakout formation when you take a look at the daily. Therefore, when you combine everything together, like the daily and the intraday, you can definitely, definitely say, okay, I want to go long somewhere. Now, by the way, coming back to the daily, this breakout formation is true for approximately 142. Something like 142, that would be the point. Let's take a look at uh, the intraday where 142 was right over here. I couldn't find any technical entry here, for example. That right over here, it was just a bit too extended. Can't find any technical entry. But there definitely was one here at 140.150. So 140.150 could have been a great entry point in Apple. And again, uptrending. Um, buyers are getting more aggressive here. More aggressive here, as you can see there. Don't let it move down that much nice uh, resistance over here and finally goes up. Now that you understand that you have an uptrending stock, now that you understand, you can start looking for reversal. So here's a nice reversal. That's a nice reversal pattern here with bottoming tail. There's a nice reversal pattern over here. Now, of course, you know, looking at it right now, uh, that makes it, theoretically speaking, much easier than in real life because when you really are looking at it during the training day, then of course it, it is a little bit more tricky. Uh, it's it's not as simple as uh, making a decision right now. I mean, trying to figure out what happens right now. But again, if you are being supported also by a market that is moving higher, and as you can see, the market is moving higher today, then let's try and make it look like Apple here. So you really... You 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 can you you have the backwind because you take a look at the S and P 500, and then at the same time you look for patterns, reversal patterns, and so on. So the thing is, again, as I mentioned at the beginning of our lesson today, you need to combine everything together. You need to combine the fact that you're seeing reversal patterns and that uh, the trend is higher and that uh, whatever. So that that's very important to combine everything together. Well, Lane, I, I'm sorry. I, I know you asked this question a while ago, but I don't know right now what the answer to be because I don't know exactly what it was asked about. Uh, well, several questions. Want to trade today using a pullback. Would you look for pullback in one minute or anticipate five minute candles? You could have seen the same thing, Lane, as in, in five minutes. What was it actually that I was... <laughs> I have it here. I have a trading platform here. Uh, it was... What was it? DRI, right? DRI. Let's see, by the way, what happens there. Well, DRI. Yeah, that, that was right over here. One minute candles, you can't really see that in five minute candles. You can only see that in one minute candles, really, because right, even that is hard because it moved over the highs, waited for a pullback, and then went into this pullback over here. Um, so, yes, it was one minute pullback, otherwise, it was very, very hard to see. I did see it in one minute pullback. So, DRI was a great, nice trade. Yes, I think Diego, I would. If I would have seen Apple the way it did today, and uh, even though I don't usually trade Apple, I definitely think I would have considered that uh, going for a long. We know it's 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 kind of easy to say it now, okay? I I I I really have to put my money where my mouth is, and you know what? If I would have seen that live, right now it looks logical, but if I would have seen it live, well, you know. <laughs> It also depends. Let's say I was losing money today. Let's say I was winning money. It's 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 things are different. Things are different sometimes. Okay, let's. Uh, sorry, if I miss some of the questions, guys, I'm sorry. I have to go uh, to the next slides. Uh, price price patterns, guys. Price patterns. Um, technical patterns. Price formation usually made continuation movement in the same direction. 
pattern may occur in any time frames, five minutes and so on. This technical pattern combined with trend can give us trade idea and so on. Yeah, I think we we kind of talked about everything that is written here and they help us de determine the correct entry and exit point. Absolutely. So these are the most used price patterns. Now, again, when I'm watching, for example, cup and handle, and let's say I want to go long at this point over here, we need to consider the trend. And when you take a look at the way that this cup and handle is for, for, formatted, then you need to consider that the price really came down from here down. Okay, so um, when I'm looking at that, you know what, let me, let me try and draw this if I can. Okay, so you just need to imagine that the price maybe came in from here. Okay, oh, oh my god, what did I just do? Okay, not really like a pendulum, okay? But seriously, the price came in from here and, and came to the point where you see this cup and handle formation and then you want to go long, you want to go long because the previous trend is higher, okay? It's moving up. I have to delete this terrible painting that I just made. Okay, so again, going long means the trend was coming from here. Over here, inverted cup and handle means that the trend started somewhere from here, moved up, sellers got more aggressive, more aggressive, and then comes the breakdown where you should maybe short. And that's a head and shoulders. Uh, head and shoulders, um, actually this is wrong. This is not, this is the inverted head and shoulders. And this is in fact the head and shoulders. It's, it's wrong as it's stated here. So that's the left shoulder. Uh, here's the head. That's the right shoulder. And at that point, these are again accepted. Let's call them this way. Uh, breakout or breakdown patterns. So here you want to short it once it comes under this dotted line. Here's you want to go long and that's an inverse head and shoulders where you have the left shoulder, head and right shoulder. Okay and double bottom same idea again uh, price uh, find some resistance and again it comes from here so that's an uptrend price goes up find some resistance come down comes up again same resistance come down but to the same distance right now and then moves higher what is better that the price comes down the same distance as this one or maybe this one is better when the price really first comes down here goes up comes down a little bit less and then moves higher. Which one would you prefer? This one over here? Forgetting about the previous one, okay? This one over here or that one over there when the price comes to that point? You prefer the higher low, which means like uh, here, meaning that uh, at that point the price did not come down all the way to that point. You prefer the double bottom, Maria, which means it came down to this point. Okay, double bottom, you too, Frank. Okay, I, I would actually prefer that. I would like to see the buyers getting more aggressive. I can see that uh, they started buying here originally. Price came back, came down, failed to move higher. Buyers are in fact getting more aggressive, fighting for every stock that is available and then moving higher. That shows me that uh, the spirits really are, everything's getting warm and it's more likely to move higher. And then we have a triple bottom. Well, the more the consolidation is, the more likely for the stock to move higher, okay? The more it consolidates, the more likely it is to uh, to move higher. Therefore, uh, there's a, an old saying say, uh, saying uh, the longer the base, the higher into space. So as you can see, it's basing here and the longer the base, the higher into space because it's, it's like steam that is being built up here. And then once it really comes through, then 
Oh my God, it really runs. So that, that's something that is very important. Now, the, the inverse formation, of course, is the same. That's a breakdown, that's a breakdown, and head and shoulders and everything, just like we just discussed. Let's take a look uh, again at the screen. And again, if you take a look at DRI, that is team building, okay? That is team building. That means that this breakout should be very nice once it moves over the highs, which wasn't, by the way. So it doesn't always work, right? And maybe it's a little bit late now for it to work, but this consolidation here is very, very nice. And you can really take, uh, take, a, good leg, take a good look at it in, 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 in different formations. I think I will... I, what, what was it? Shop was it? Hmm. Was it the daily? I remember something in shop. Yeah, look at that. Look at this consolidation. That was something I actually missed. But look at this consolidation, long, cons long consolidation area here. That's the daily, of course. And look, it consolidates, consolidates, and then over the highs. That, that's a nice breakout formation after a long consolidation. But you, you can find it in really plenty of stocks all the time, really. Uh, yes, so just a question based on yesterday chart, DRI, can you figure out today move? Can't remember really how DRI looked yesterday. Well, no, you can't. You see, that would be a nice breakout over here, right? So if you take a look at the daily of DRI, you know, it's funny, I think it's the first time looking at the daily. So when you take a look at the daily, that looks like a nice breakout, but that could have been very nice if the price would have started somewhere around here and moved higher and then moved over here. But it really started with a gap up, a very big gap up, and then continued. Sometimes when it gaps up, you don't really need to look at it. By the way, there is a move over the recent highs, which is right over here, which could have helped. That's, that's the resistance point, recent highs. Now, sometimes you need to go to the weekly chart to understand where it's coming from. Now, the more I look at it, the more I like it. The more I look at it, the more I like it. So, it's obviously all-time highs for DRI. All-time highs for DRI. It's just moved to new uncharted territory. Then, yes, that certainly is helping. Why is that, by the way? If I'm moving higher, why does it help? To a new <laughs> uncharted territory. Why does it help me, guys? Any, any, any answer? What do you think? It is an all-time highs, what we're seeing here today. All-time highs. That's the weekly, by the way. If you take a look at the daily, again, these are all-time highs. Never been to this territory, DRI. Never, ever, ever been to this territory. No resistance. Why? You're right. Why no resistance? Oh, well, of course. It's a stupid question. Sorry. I mean, surely no resistance because <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was that's the answer I was I was looking for. Uh, Said you're correct. Well, you know um, when. No, of course you're right. Anyway, when 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 a stock comes to this point, let's say over here, and then comes down, there's a lot of uh, people who lost money. In fact, because think about all of these people who bought the stock right over here. So uh, these people are in fact losing money as the stock is moving down. Their only wish really is that the price would remain would would come back to this area. When the price does come back to this area, they will start selling they will start selling. So, for example, throughout the time that the stock is moving down, all of here is not just sellers. For every seller, there is a buyer. So, there's a lot of people who were selling as it moved down, but remember that every seller found a buyer, and the buyers are waiting for the price to come down. Now, the buyers here, as the price moved down, says, oh my God, if it's just going to come back to my, if it's just going to come back to my, the price I bought, then I would definitely sell. Now, as you can see, for example, over here, there are, at this point, it was several days. You see that? Here, it was less time as it moved down. But here, 
it stays one, two, three, four, maybe five days. So at this area over here, it stayed quite a long time. That means there were plenty more sellers, therefore buyers, meaning there's a lot of people who watched it at that point, decided to go long because they thought it's probably going to continue higher. It failed. It came down quite dramatically, by the way. It's like 10% here, okay? Maybe less, maybe 8, maybe 7, something like that. So it came down. The on their only wish is for the price to come back up. So if the price really comes back up to this area, that means that these people, many of them, not all of them, of course, are going to be sellers. And that's why it finds resistance over here. So yes, the daily certainly helps, and especially when it moved over this high over here, that is vacuum. No, nobody who really wants to sell because it just came to his uh, to his buying point or whatever. So that that's a very important thing. Do you at this time base the movement on the market? Yes, absolutely. At this time of day, you should be basing it on the market too. Of course, that's one of the tools. Going back to the slides. Um, we're going to discuss some basic formations here, like uh, cup and handle. So as you can see, that's the cup, that's the handle. And again, the idea is very simple. As you can see, price is moving down, buyers are becoming ag aggressive, buyers are becoming more aggressive. It also has to do not just with the fact that the buyers became aggressive at this point over here, which is higher, which is important. But also, as you can see, it took them less time to drive it back to the highs. So this time difference is also important. The fact that it is shorter here than this time frame, okay? So the fact is they are becoming more aggressive and that's a more interesting um, formation. And that's why it's called cup and handle, but because it resembles this whatever cup. Okay, um, cup and handle formation, as you can see, that could be considered the cup. This could be considered the handle all of that, and once it goes through, this is good. But by the way, that is, in my opinion, this is really the cup. This is really the handle, and it failed, <laughs> okay? But, okay, so you go longer, and you see that it is being f formatted at a little bit longer period, which is quite good because then you have a longer resistance line, and that means that, again, longer the base, the higher into space. And then you can see that the buyers are getting more and more aggressive, which is also something that is quite clear, kind of triangle uh, formation and cup and handle. And of course, well, we certainly gave you an example that worked out amazingly good. Usually it doesn't look that great. Okay. But still is very nice. By the way, if you go to DRI, that's quite the same. Here's the cup. Here's the handle, but it came in with a gap up. So, well, it doesn't really count, but uh, it reminds it. It still looks good. And if DRI would have done that without the gap up, that could have been a great trade. Well, we used it today, though. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> we made some profit in DRI today. Okay, so um, cup and handle could, could be also for the downside, of course, and again, that depends on the trend. You want to see the stock coming down, you want to short it, fine, under the cup and handle formation. So you have uh, the, the support line, you have the cup and handle. And again, as you can see here, it's not really clear, but that's okay. You don't expect to see something that is really absolutely cut clear. Head and shoulders. So, three peaks in fact so as you can see it's the left shoulder head the right shoulder and then it it is in fact the same kind of thing because the heaven shoulder is also a cup and handle as you can see here it's an inverse cup and handle until this point over here but if you add it really if you add this left shoulder uh, to the equation that makes it even s stronger because it, it, it bounced from here, and then it came up, failed to move higher, came down, failed to move higher, sales getting more aggressive, and here we go. 
So again, head and shoulder formation are very important. Uh, that's an example. And again, you don't see that very, very clearly, but that is a head and shoulder formation. And there it goes. Um, inverted head and shoulders, same idea. Should you go long? Well, at this case, maybe you should. I said earlier that when you see a formation that is counter trend, you shouldn't consider that long. But when you see, for example, a head and shoulder formation, which is a longer formation, takes time. If it was just like, let's say, cup and handle, you could have said, well, I don't know, maybe it's actually going to continue moving lower. But when you see a head and shoulder, in this case, inverse head and shoulder, then that's a long formation. Since it's long, there's a good chance it's going to change direction. So in this case, it did change direction, and that usually happens with head and shoulders formation, which again are longer. So you could consider a counter trend trade in head and shoulder formation. Now the same thing applies for double, um, double top or double bottom formation. Same idea. As I mentioned earlier, I may like this one a little bit less than I like cup and handle, but they're still very good. They still work. They're still very nice. And again, either to go short or to go long, as you can see here, that's a sort of a double bottom, but it also comes with a small handle over here, right? So that's even a better formation indeed. So again, there's a support resistance, double bottom with a small handle on the right side, and then you got an upside breakout move. Triple bottom, triple top, again, same story, and again, the more it consolidates, the more it tries to move higher in phase, the more it finds a resistance, and then maybe coming over. Sometimes, the better it is. Same thing applies for triple bottom as you can see here, and that is always better because you see more and more um, clear resistance, clear support, and then the move over or lower or whatever. Flex are very important, bull flex uh, or bear flex. So when you see a bull flag like that, uh, you can see that in fact it's an upward trend, it's uptrending, and then it holds near the highs. It almost does not, hold on a second. Um, okay. Uh, it almost doesn't, uh, it almost doesn't really uh, pull back. It holds to the highs. And that means that uh, the buyers are remaining aggressive all the time. So we always like to see bull flags. Uh, we also always like to see them consolidating uh, near the highs and so on. So bull flags are always something that we, we, we like to see. And again, that kind of a reminder of a flag. Uh, that's the pole. That's the flag. Okay, so it looks kind of flag. That's a bull flag, by the way, in, in, in real life. It comes in with also resistance which started over there, which is which is nice. Doesn't always come like that, but that's a nice combination. And then again a flag, and then price moves higher. Um, bear flag would sometimes look like that. Not a very sophisticated uh, bear flag. We could have found actually something better, but it's a nice resistance, as you can see here. I could I could. I could find something nicer. Uh, and of course, the flag is upside down in this case. And uh, triangles, always love to, love to trade triangles. As you can see, that's a triangle um, that doesn't really uh, trending somewhere. But here you can see that it is ascending. And you have this, uh, we've seen that earlier, We have you have this resistance point over here. So the buyers are getting more and more aggressive lovely triangle always work better and that also works better when we see this triangle pointing lower now of course when you have a triangle you can also discuss the cup and handle that you're seeing here but again trend and everything works in your favor and therefore triangles are very very nice 
uh, to trade. So you have bullish and bearish formations for triangle. Always, usually, are working very nicely. So um, just to take a look at uh, the way it is, we mentioned that earlier. We talked about uh, uh, the fact that we're seeing buyers pressure as the price moving higher. That's a very, very nice looking triangle here. You have the resistance on the top. And again, that's a very clear formation, which usually drives the price higher. OK, but uh, again, um, we should be watching any sort of uh, formation. And just to summarize what we learned today, uh, we have bullish engulfing morning stars, different kind of candlestick reversal patterns. We discussed that today. Price formations help us identify uh, the trend. Uh, we usually trade them within the trend. Okay, very important. So the next time you see stock that is trending higher and you find a great um, cup and handle formation uh, inverse cup and handle formation, for example, to short it, you don't really want to do that. You don't really want to do that. Even though you find a great pattern, you do not really want to do that. Okay. Uh, always trade formations within the trend. The trend is your main friend. Okay. Cup and handles are named because they look like cup and handles. We discussed that. Hand and shoulders anticipate breakout or breakdown again but it could be a change of direction because they are longer and bull flags are always fun to trade really shows about uh, shows the traders show the uh, the fact that uh, uh, buyers are remaining aggressive or aggressive or sellers are remaining aggressive and so on and uh, really to summarize things what i kept on saying today several times you need in order to be successful in trading to anticipate the anticipation of others said by John Maynard Keynes. So the fact is, is not just looking at the trend, not just understanding where the, where, where, where the pattern is, but really moving in at the right time where you anticipate that somebody else would move after you. If you're the first, you're going to make the money. And take into consideration that every cent counts. Every cent counts. So if you do it better, if you, as as the, as time goes by, you will get better and better. And as time goes by, you will anticipate better. Therefore, make more money on a long trade. Uh, take the partial at, at, at a better at a better time. Um, really gain a little bit more, lose a little bit less, and the difference of just a few cents. In every trade, if you do the calculation at the end of the year and you just add a few cents to each and every trade, that's a huge difference between a small winner and a huge winner, a small loser and a winner. It's a huge difference. So in fact, what I'm trying to say here is the anticipation is the key. But at first, you need to understand the patterns, which we discussed today, reversals, breaks out, breakouts, whatever. Then once you get everything together, you combine them all, work with the trend, and try to get as much as possible from the trade that you can. Well, thank you for being here with me in this uh, lesson. I'll, I will hand you over to Scott for the second part of uh, your education today. And uh, just um, 10 minutes break. And hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. Hope you enjoyed. Thank you for being here. Yeah, thank you. And just, you know, f try and figure out what we said today. And your homework is, in fact, trying to anticipate. So it doesn't hurt watching stocks move without trading them. I mean, it helps. You want to trade them. But try and do that without trading them. Try just to watch a stock. Again, boot camp. I know it's hard. Watch a stock. Try to anticipate. Try to figure out where you would have moved up in, where you would have, would have moved out. And it helps you to 
you know, figure out that for yourself and after a certain amount of time, things will get better. You will know better. You will, uh, you will anticipate it better than you do now. So that's very important. Okay. Thanks, Twitter. Um, again, 10 minutes break and then Scott's coming in. See you.